Hi everyone. Well, we've determined the, the coordinates of all the standard angles on the unit circle, and now we're going to take the big leap. And the big leap is how do we determine what the trigonometric functions are, the values of the trig functions for each one of these angles, these standard angles on the unit circle. And what we need to do is we need to talk about right triangle trigonometry at this point. And if you need a refresher on that, there is a video. It's called Right Triangle Trigonometry that you probably need to look at. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a right triangle. It was the very first right triangle I drew when we came up with these coordinates. And it's this 30, 60, 90 triangle for that pi over 6 angle, which happens to be 30 degrees. Okay, there's our right triangle. I'm going to go ahead and write in my angle here. My angle is pi over 6. And remind you what the sides of these tri this triangle was. The hypotenuse was 1, the radius of the unit circle. We determined that this was radical 3 over 2. And we determined that this was 1 half. Okay? What I want you to remember now is what we learned about right triangle trigonometry. And that is the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle in a right triangle. And let's remind ourselves, the sine of an angle was opposite over hypotenuse. I'm just going to use some abbreviations for now to save on time and space. Cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And my tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's look at what that means in terms of my triangle right here. So for this angle, the opposite side is 1 half. That's my opposite side. My adjacent leg is radical 3 over 2. And my hypotenuse is 1. So I should be able to determine now what these major three trig functions, what the values are based on those opposite adjacent hypotenuse sides. So my first one, my sine, is my opposite side, which is 1 half, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. That's just plain all 1 half, isn't it? 1, divi one half divided by 1. My adjacent side was radical 3 over 2, divided by 1 which is radical 3 over 2. Let's stop with those two first because I want you to notice something right away and this is really really important. This is probably the most important thing you'll learn so far and that is that that particular value for sine happens to be the y coordinate and my value for cosine happens to be my x coordinate. This is big so what are we saying? We're saying that on the unit circle, the sine of an angle is the y-coordinate. The cosine of an angle is the x-coordinate. But what about the tangent? The tangent is opposite, which is 1 half, over radical 3 over 2. Well, 1 half was my y coordinate, and radical 3 over 2 was my x coordinate, wasn't it? So we can make one more determination here, and that is that the tangent of an angle is y over x. Very, very, very important. Really important. Okay? And by the way, if you do this math, I'm not going to do it for you. But if you do this math for the tangent and rationalize your denominator, you would get radical 3 over 3. Okay? So, we can, for every single one of these unit circle angles, we can now determine what is the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle based on the coordinates. Okay? Let's take a look at a few. So for pi over 4, the sine of pi over 4 is my y-coordinate, which is radical 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is my x-coordinate, which also happens to be radical 2 over 2. 
and the tangent of pi over 4 would be my y over my x. And I hope you can see that when I divide radical 2 over 2 by radical 2 over 2, I get 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And I can do that for every single coordinate on this unit circle. Again, my y value is the sine, my x value is the cosine, and y over x, when you do that math, gives you the tangent. Okay, let's do one that isn't in quadrant one. Let's do, um, how about four pi over three, way down here. Let's put these answers out here. Okay, the sine of four pi over three is my y coordinate, which is negative radical three over two. The cosine of four pi over three is my x coordinate, which is negative one half. And the tangent of four pi over three is going to be my y over my x. That would be negative radical three over two divided by negative one half. And again, I'll leave you to do the math, but you should get radical three as an answer. You can do that for every single coordinate on the unit circle. There are a couple of tricky spots. The tricky spots are here and here, but only in terms of tangent. If you look at tangent, which is y over x, if I look at either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, what happens? If I do the tan of pi over 2, that's y over x. And you know that you cannot divide by 0. It is undefined. So the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. And so would the tangent of 3 pi over 2 because we have a negative 1 over 0. So your tan would be undefined there as well. Okay? So again, your sine is the y value. Your cosine is the x value. And your tangent is y over x. Now, so you don't have to go through all of the calculations for all the tans. Let me give you a hint. Ready for a hint? And the hint is this. Let me go ahead and I'm going to clear everything out. Oh, but I got rid of my image too. Let me put that back. There we go. Let's bring it back. It's back. Okay, so let me go ahead and rewrite in my angles. This is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. If I figure out the tangents, the tangent of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 3. The tangent of pi over 4, if you do y over x, turns out to be 1. And the tangent of pi over 3 turns out to be radical 3. There's a way to remember this. It's a little it's interesting, a little fun, and that is this. Look at the denominator. The 6 has two 3's in it. 6 is composed of two 3's, isn't it? And those that have a denominator of 3 just have a single 3. So if I'm looking at a angle that has a 6, say 5 pi over 6 here, I know that my tangent is going to be a radical 3 over 3, but I have to worry about my signs. My y is positive, my x is negative. So when I do y divided by x, I get a negative. Okay? Tans turn out to be positive here, negative here. And since we're dividing a negative by a negative, my tans are positive here, and they're negative here. And each one of the 45 degrees um, multiples within the quadrant are going to be 1 or negative 1. So this would be the tan of 
3 pi over 4 would be negative 1, right? The tan of this angle would be 1, the tan of this angle would be negative 1. But again, as soon as you're talking about over 3's, this is 2 pi over 3, isn't it? So that has a tangent of negative radical 3 because it's in quadrant 2 and y is positive and x is negative. We have, I have another video up where we talk about the signs of the trigonometric functions, which will clarify that for you. Okay? One final word. And that final word is coterminal angles. Okay? If I have pi over 3 here, I know the sine of pi over 3 is my y-coordinate, which was what? Radical 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 was my x-coordinate, which was 1 half. And my tangent of pi over 3 with the denominator of 3 was radical 3. But what if I had a coterminal angle for pi over 3? What if instead of pi over 3, I asked you, what was the sine of that would be what? Negative. If we go all the way around the circle, we end up at Oh, what is that? Negative 5 pi over 3, isn't it? What's the sign of negative 5 pi over 3? It has the same terminal side, same coordinates as pi over 3, so my answer would be radical 3 over 2. So if you get a coterminal angle, an angle that's not in the complete unit circle 0 through 2 pi, you're going to have to figure out what that angle is in the 0 through 2 pi range to figure out what the um, trig function is. Let's do one more. What if I have something like 19 pi over 4? Let's say I want the cosine of 19 pi over 4. Well, 19 pi over 4 is not in between 0 and 2 pi, is it? 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4, wouldn't it? So I need to figure out what angle this really is in terms of an angle between 0 and 2 pi. How do I find coterminal angles? We talked about it. We add and subtract multiples of 2 pi. And if we're talking about over 4, that means we're going to be adding and subtracting multiples, or we're going to be adding, oops, got ahead of myself there. We're going to be adding and subtracting 8 pi over 4, because that's 2 pi, isn't it? So let's subtract 8 pi over 4. What do we get? We get 11 pi over 4. Are we in the unit circle yet? No, we're not. No, we're not. So let's do it one more time. 11 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. We're at 3 pi over 4. Yay! That's good. Okay, that's a unit circle angle, isn't it? It's right here. Here's 3 pi over 4. And if I know my unit circle coordinates, I would discover that that is negative radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. And what's my cosine? My cosine is my x-coordinate. So the cosine of 19 pi over 4 would be negative radical 2 over 2. So if you get an angle that is not in the unit circle, it does not fall between 0 and 2 pi, you're going to need to add and subtract multiples of 2 pi until you get to the coterminal angle that is in that range from 0 to 2 pi. And then you can look at your coordinates and discover what the trig functions are. So that's sine, cosine, and tangent. That was a lot of information for one video. You'll have to digest that a little bit. Certainly make a, a uh, copy of the unit circle for yourself with all of the angles, all of the coordinates. It sometimes helps to make a table that shows all of the angles, all of the coordinates, and the sine, cosine, tan, and the cotangent secant and cosecant, which we're going to do on the next video, just so you have them all handy. Thanks a lot.